Welcome to Electron Line. Once in a while a viewer will ask a question and this particular question the viewer asked was pretty interesting so we thought let's make a video on it. And the question went as follows. A projectile is fired at an, a at an angle that's unknown with an initial velocity that's unknown but it's in the air for 8 seconds and reaches a distance of 1120 meters. Find the maximum height reached, the initial velocity and the angle at which it was fired. So it is interesting, how do you approach something like this? Well, typically again in the same way. With projectile motion, finding time in the air is actually a really good way to start. So let's do that for both the X and the Y direction. So in the X direction, we can use the equation X equals X sub naught plus V sub naught in the X direction times time plus one half A T squared. But for projectile motion, in the x direction there will not be an acceleration because there's no forces acting on the projectile once the projectile is in motion. So this goes to zero and the initial position we can call that zero as well. So this equation reduces to the, the distance reached is equal to initial velocity in the x direction times time. And given what we're given here, this will be 1120 equals v initial in the x direction, which can be expressed like that. So that would be v initial times the cosine of theta times the time, which is 8 seconds. So here we have an expression with two unknowns, v initial and the angle theta. So we have two unknowns, meaning we're going to need two equations. Let's do the same now for the y direction. In the y direction, we use the similar equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared because in this case the acceleration due to gravity is the acceleration in the y direction. Again plugging in what we know we have the initial and final height to be equal to zero according to our projectile here so we have zero equals zero plus v initial in the y direction which is v initial times the sine of theta multiply times 8 and then here we have a minus 4.9 times 8 squared. Notice on that equation since we have 0 on the left side we don't have a term over here we can actually divide everything by 8 that means this and this will reduce and now we can solve this equation for v initial times the cosine of theta and this equation v initial times the sine of theta. So here we get V initial times the cosine of theta is equal to 1, 1120 divided by 8. Let's see here, 1000 divided by 8 is 125 and 120 divided by 8 is 15, that would be 140. And over here we can say that V initial times the sine of theta is equal to 8 times 4.9, that would be 39.2. Okay, now we have two equations and two unknowns, so we can solve those simultaneously. The technique we can use here is divide one by the other because then the v initials cancel out. So we have v initial times the sine of theta is equal to 39.2 and we divide that by this equation here which is v initial times the cosine of theta which is equal to 140. Notice the v initials cancel out and the sine divided by the cosine which is the tangent, the tangent of theta is equal to that ratio. So we have um, 39.2 divided by 140, that's the arc tangent, well it's the tangent of 0 0.28 which means that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 0 0.28 which is equal to, take the inverse tangent, we get 15.64 degrees. Okay, so now we have the angle. Let's go ahead and circle that. Next, we need to find the initial velocity. Now that's easy to do here because once we have the angle, we just plug that in here. So we can say that V initial is going to be equal to 39.2 divided by the sine of the angle we just found. That's 15.64 degrees. So take the sine of that. Take the inverse and multiply that times 39.2 and 
and we get 145.4 meters per second. So now we also have the initial velocity. Finally, we want to find the maximum height reached. The maximum height reached, well, let's use the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Because after all, when we get to the very top, the maximum height is y, so that's h max. The initial height we started with was zero plus the initial velocity in the y direction. Let's see here, the initial velocity in the y direction, that's v initial times the sine of theta, which is 39.2, 39.2 times the time in the air. Now the time in the air is when it reaches the maximum height, which will be four seconds. Half the time for the total trajectory, minus 4.9, one half times g, times four squared. Now we go ahead and plug that in and see what we get. So we get 39.2 times four, and subtract from that, minus 4.9 times 16 equals, and h max is equal to 78.4 meters. All right, and that is how to do a projectile motion like that. This is kind of unique. Notice that we were given the maximum range and the time in the air. Usually, those are the things that they're asking for and the things that they normally give us, such as initial velocity and the angle at which it's fired, was well, not known, so we had to kind of do this problem in reverse. So this is a really good example. This is how we'll approach it.